Hi folks, it's good to be with you today. Uh, we're sharing the Word of God today. And uh, we're sharing about Jesus Christ, the Saviour. So, we're in the book of Titus. It says, Paul, the servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. Paul says the acknowledging after truth, after godliness, that there is a truth. There's only one truth, there's not many, many truths or many, many ways to heaven. But there's only one way to heaven and that is the acknowledgement of the truth and that truth is about Jesus Christ the Saviour in hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began in hope of eternal life that there is eternal life that in the word of God that talks about the eternal life there is eternal life this life is a short life and then we pass by and then into eternity and God offers us and his word eternal life eternal life this life is passing away you can amass millions of pounds you can amass a big house a big car you can amass all the things in this world but eventually you'll die and the Bible teaches the Bible teaches there is eternal life The Bible clearly teaches that there is eternal life. But it's only in the truth. It's only in the truth. It's only in the truth. There are many, many lies being pumped on the media. We see fake news everywhere. And there's fake news all over the place. But there's only one truth. And that one truth is the only truth that can give us eternal life. Eternal life can be found in one and only Jesus Christ. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. This promise of eternal life was given before the beginning of time and manifested itself in time when God came down in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ came as a man. It says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then it says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And when we see Jesus Christ, we see the Son of God. We see the Son of God. We see the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We see the Creator of the universe in Jesus Christ, who brings us eternal life. And if you want eternal life today, the question of all questions that you have to ask is, do you believe in Jesus Christ? That is the only eternal life that you can have or can find. He is the only eternal life but there is eternal life in Him. Eternal life that lasts forever. Eternal life that is with God. Eternal life that is peaceful and joyful. Eternal life that is secure. And that eternal life is found in Christ. And it says God cannot lie. God promises you eternal life. God cannot lie. Men 
will lie. Politicians will lie. People will lie to you. But the Word of God says here that God cannot lie. Hey, bro. Eternal life, God cannot lie. God has given you a promise that you can have eternal life. God has given you a promise that you can have eternal life. He gave that promise in the Word of God, in the Holy Bible. In the Holy Bible, you can have a knowledge of God. In the Holy Bible, you can know your way to heaven. In the Holy Bible, you can know and have a relationship with the living God because God cannot lie. God cannot lie. God cannot lie and God has given us a word. God has given us a promise that if we trust Him, we will be saved. If we trust Him, we will have eternal life. This is our confidence. This is our hope. This is our joy and this is our peace. The eternal life in the Bible is in Jesus Christ, the Savior, our Lord. In Him. In Him. In Christ the Saviour, in Christ the Lord. If you trust Him as your Lord and Saviour today. Do you want eternal life? Do you want to go to heaven? Or do you want to go to hell? Do you want to go to judgment? Or do you want to go to, to heaven? Where do you want to go today? God has promised you in His Word, He cannot lie. God cannot lie. He has promised eternal life. He has promised eternal salvation. He has promised eternal joy. But in these due times, manifested His Word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Saviour. Committed through preaching. The preaching of the word is ordained of God. The preaching of the word is ordained of God. And that preaching is to preach God our Saviour. There is a Saviour God. There is a God who wants to save you today. A God who wants to show you His mercy today. A God who wants to show you His grace today. And that grace and that mercy comes through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Saviour. He is the Saviour. He is the Lord who can forgive you. He is the Lord who can cleanse you. He is the Lord that can wash you. He is the Lord that can save you. His name is Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus Christ, the Saviour. He is God, our Saviour. Just as you were drowning, if you were drowning in a boat, Someone would save you when we're all drowning. We're all drowning in the sea of life. We're drowning under sin. We're drowning under breaking the commandments of God. And Jesus Christ came to save us. He came to save us. He came to save us, my friend. To save us and give us a hope and give us a future. God, our Savior. He is the Savior that will help you. He is a saviour that will comfort you. He is a saviour that will strengthen you. He is a saviour that will cleanse you with His blood. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. That blood was cleansed for you. That blood was shed for you. That blood was shed upon the cross. The Son of God died on that cross and shed His blood for you on that cross and died for you on that cross. He shed His blood. The Son of God shed His blood for you on that cross. As God your Savior, as God your Savior, to save you from the wrath to come, to save you from the judgment to come. God is a Savior today. A Savior 
that has come to save you today. To Titus, my own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. There is a common faith. The common faith is Jesus Christ the Savior, my friend. That is the common faith. The common faith is Jesus Christ the Savior. That is the common faith. The common faith is He who came and shed His blood. He who came and died on a cross. He who gave His life for you and me. He who was whipped and mocked and humiliated. That is the common faith where he died and rose again. And if you trust him and die with him, you will rise again and be with him in eternity. The common faith, the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior. That is the common faith, my friends. The common faith of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood and gave his life for you and me. says in Titus chapter 3, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to, to obey magistrates and to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasure, serving divers lusts and pleasure, living in malice and envy and hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, towards men appeared. The kindness. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, to all men appeared. Towards men appeared. The kindness. The kindness and love of God our Saviour. The kindness and love of God our Saviour. The kindness and love of God our Saviour. God is kind and God is love. And God has shown his kindness and his love to humanity by showing the death on the cross. There is the love of God and the kindness of God shown at the cross. There on that cross, the love of God and the kind of kindness of God is shown. There the love of God and the kindness of God is shown. For there the Son of God died and shed his blood. There he gave his life as a sacrifice for your sin. There he laid down his life for you on that cross. The love of God and kindness of our Savior was given for you on that cross. You want to know the love of God, and if you want to know the kindness of God, there on the cross, you can see it. There on the cross is revealed the kindness and love of God. God bless you. God bless you, bro. There you can see the kindness and love of God, our Savior. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but that according to his mercy he saved us. Man cannot get into heaven by his own ability, by what he can do. Man can batter down the doors of heaven, but he can't get in. Man can use reason, man can use science, man can use religion, and he can batter and batter and batter the door of heaven, but he cannot get in by reason, he cannot get in by science, he cannot get in by religion. Man cannot get into heaven by his own ability, by his own strength. Man cannot get into heaven by his own ingenuity, his own ability, his own strength. It is not possible. 
The only way to get into heaven is by the mercy of God. And that mercy is shown you in the cross of Jesus Christ where God came down and shed his blood and gave his life for you and me. Man can try whatever he wants. Man can boast, man can be proud, man, man, man can be, uh, think he's great. But man can only come into heaven, only come into the presence of God if man humbles himself. If man humbles himself, humbles himself before the Lord and says, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner and I need you. I'm a sinner and I need your grace. I'm a sinner and I need your mercy. Lord, I'm the chief of sinners. Have mercy upon me. Only until we come to an end in ourselves, an end in our righteousness, an end in who we are, only until we come to an end in ourselves will we find God. Only until we come to an end in ourselves. And then when we realize our own righteousness is filthy rags. Our own righteousness is filthy rags. Only until we realize our own righteousness is filthy rags. That we cannot save ourselves. That we cannot save ourselves. Only until then. Only until we come and cast ourselves upon the mercy of God. And say Lord forgive me. I'm the chief of sinners. Only until we do that. The prodigal son came to his father and father said, he said to his father, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. And his father put his ring on his finger and put a, put, put a cloak around him and said, my son was lost, but now he's found. Only until we come to an end in ourselves and realize we need the grace of God. Only the grace of God can cover you. Only the grace of God can wash you. Only the grace of God can show you mercy. For the grace of God, there the Son of God died. And there the Son of God shed His blood. There the Son of God died on the cross and took the wrath that you and I deserve. There He died and there He shed His blood. And there He was broken on that cross. There He shed His blood on that cross for you. It is greater than any philosophy. It is greater than any religion. It is greater than any idea. It is greater than any what man can think. That God came down and died on a cross. It is beyond mind. It is beyond ingenuity. It is beyond political ideology. It is beyond philosophy. It is beyond religion. That God should come down as a man and die on that cross for you. That is the greatest message of the hour. That is the greatest message of the, of the times. And we throw it away like fools. We throw it away as if we throw gold in the streets. Imagine if you had gold bullion and you just threw it away. And you threw it on the streets. And you just threw your gold away. That is what you're throwing away when you throw away Jesus Christ. You're throwing away the Savior. You're throwing away the one and only person that can save you. The only one can lift you out of degradation. The only one that can bring you hope. The only one that can bring you peace. The only one that can cleanse you and wash you. The only one that can redeem you. The only one that showed he was the good shepherd that laid down his life for his sheep. The only one that showed his mercy and love to you. Will you not come? Will you not come? There is eternal life. There is eternal life for you. Eternal life for you. Eternal life forevermore to drink of his eternal blessings. Eternal joy and eternal peace all in the Son of God. He said, I am the light of the world. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I am the bread of life. He said, I am the light of the world. There he is, the Son of God. We do not believe in him. There are dark forces around today in our land. Dark forces are arising in our land. 
There is a staring in our land and there are dark forces on the march. But there is a greater force than the darkness and that is Christ. And my friends, the only light and hope that you need is in Him. What more can I say? What more can I do? I can only point to Him who was dying for you. I can only point to Him who was crucified for you. I can only point to Him who was shed His blood for you. I can only point to Him and say that He died for you on that cross. And He shed His blood for you on that cross. And He died for you on that cross. And shed His blood for you on that cross. There, the Son of God shed His blood and was crucified on that cross for you. He was crucified on that cross for you. The Son of God died and was crucified for you. And if you confess your sin, if you confess your sin, and you have to confess it and be honest. Hey man, hey, how are you doing? I'm okay, bro, you alright? Yeah. Uh, you have, have you been to the council? No, no. This area, you got to get to the council to get home. Any problems if there's anything on here? You've got to be the right one. Is it to the council? Yeah. Yeah, it's a lady. Do you know around the block? Are you from Rockdale? No, but I've been to the now.
the memorial gardens? No, I, I normally preach uh, in the middle there, officer, oh, right. but I don't, I don't normally use a PA, that's why I came here, because oh, I'm using right. a PA, because yeah. I'm too, I'm, I've got a loud voice, I normally go at the centre here, yeah, yeah. and I have a good relationship with the police and everybody, yeah, 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 no but, I, but normally I, I don't have a PA, because I've got a PA, I thought it, it, right. it's insensitive no, to we used to get somebody with a PA in the memorial gardens over there, but... But, uh, but next time I won't use the PA then, I won't bring it down if it's a problem, you right, know. That, that, it's not for us to say whether it's a problem or not. It's, it's yeah. just I know just you're doing your job. Yeah, yeah. All right. Super. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. The regulations change in September. Yes. Yeah. So it'll keep the papers on that for you. But as long as you're not so loud, we're okay. all happy. Okay. Yeah. And it's not controversial. <laughs> it's all right. I'll just preach yeah. the gospel, officer. The, whoever phoned us up was just yeah. worried about local tensions and what you say, what you're saying, might upset some people. But we didn't hear what you said, and it, well, well, when we got here, it, it it's on anything. camera, officer. If you want to watch it, no, it's all right. Yeah, I, I'm just, uh, I'm preaching the gospel. I've been coming here for years. Yeah. I've never had any problem with any any police or officers. No worries. And uh, and you won't and, get any with us, yeah. so. <laughs> And I respect what you're doing. All you know. right. All right. It's a nice day. Keep it rain off, All right. All right. Take care. God bless nice you. One. Bye See now. You so that's uh, police officers, and they're uh, coming to have a chat with me about uh, preaching and this tension. But I'm not backing down. We're, we're free to preach the gospel in our own country, so <laughs> I'm going to preach whatever people say. With a mic or with no mic? to share the Word of God. We're here to share uh, the Word of God about Jesus Christ the Saviour today. And we were talking about Christ as the Saviour, Christ as the Lord, that Christ has come to save you, that He is the only way to heaven, uh, and that He is the only hope, my friends. He is the only way to heaven, and He is the only hope. He is the only way that you can be saved today, and that is by Jesus Christ the Saviour and Jesus Christ the Lord. And that is what the Bible says. It says, by His mercy. You can know His mercy today. You can know His amazing mercy in your life. Have you made mistakes in your life? It says in the Bible, Thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery. We all make mistakes, we all sin, we all break the commandments of God. We all break the commandments of God and we all fail. We all make mistakes. We all fail. But we become guilty before God. It says in the Bible, all, all fall short of the glory of God. 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 We all fall short of the glory of God. But God shows us mercy. 
God shows us mercy. And that mercy is providing a sacrifice for our sin. Jesus is that sacrifice for us. Jesus is the one that was sacrificed for us. And if we believe that sacrifice, we can be saved. We can be saved and go to heaven if we believe that sacrifice. If we believe that sacrifice and understand that Jesus is the sacrifice for our sin and understand that that sacrifice was given for us, that that sacrifice was shed for us, then we can be saved and know his love and mercy and know his grace and know his peace and know his joy. We can know his forgiveness and we can know his grace by that sacrifice. Are you willing to believe in that sacrifice? It says in Hebrews chapter 9 that verily the first covenant and also ordinance of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle manifest the first, wherein was the candlestick and the table and the shoe bread, and which is called the sanctuary. And after that second veil, the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all, which is the golden censer and the ark of the covenant, overlaid with the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the table of the covenant. And over it the cherubims of the glory, shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. In the Old Testament you had the tabernacle and the tabernacle they had the high priest and the high priest would sacrifice for the people of Israel. The high priest would sacrifice the, those sacrifices for the people of Israel so people's sins can be forgiven, so people's sins can be cleansed. Now Jesus is the final high priest Jesus is the final high priest. Jesus is the final high priest who shed his blood for us and gave his life for us. He is the final high priest that gave his life for us and he is the final high priest that provided the sacrifice. Are you alright lads? Are you alright? Do you have a faith? What do you believe? Yeah, okay, well God bless you. Whatever you believe I respect, yeah? We're here to preach about Jesus, yeah? So Jesus is the final high priest, the final sacrifice. And he went into the Holy of Holies. He went into the Holy Presence of the Father. And there on that cross, he went into the Holy of Holies. And there, on that cross, he hung and shed his blood. And he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he was quoting Psalm 22. Psalm 22 was written a thousand years before Jesus and Jesus said that Psalm, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the reason why he said that is because he was suffering for our sin. How you doing, bro? You alright? I'm preaching about Jesus. Jesus Christ shed his blood. He was the final sacrifice for you and me. And there on that cross he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And why did he say that? He, be, he was suffering for you and me. Yes, yes. And he, lo he loved you and died for you. Yeah. He knew you because he's God, you see. No, Jesus is God. Jesus is God. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me, he said. At that moment, the wrath of God came upon him. At that moment, the Father judged him. He was never a murderer, but he was dying as a murderer. He was never a thief, but he was dying as a thief. 
At that moment when he was dying on that cross, he was dying for you and for me and for the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him shall not perish but have eternal life. And at that moment when he was dying on that cross, he was dying as your beautiful sacrifice, my friend. He was dying as your beautiful sacrifice. He was shedding his blood for you on that cross. And I love that old hymn, Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus. Vast and measured, boundless free. Rolling as a mighty ocean in its fullness over me. Do you know that old hymn? When I survey the wondrous cross. You know it, sir, don't you? When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. Amen, sir. The Prince of Glory, the Prince of Glory died on that cross. The Prince of Glory died on that cross. The Prince of Glory shed his blood. And what if Caiaphas? What if Caiaphas, sir? And what if Caiaphas? I don't understand. Tomorrow, today, yesterday, is here now. What if Caiaphas, standing there, looks at you, yes, sir. and says, you represent him, and I know him. He looks at me, and he says to me, what do you think of this man? Is he preaching? Can I ask you a question? What, what, what do you think of Jesus? What do I think of Jesus? He's a martyr. Do you think he was the he's son of God? Martyr, he's a martyr for God. He's a martyr for Caiaphas. Do, do you think he's he... a martyr for her. He's a martyr for God. Do, do you think he's the son of God? I think he's a man that got riddled by taxation from not just a coin. Peter paid the price of the coin. He got bloody taxed to hell and back. Yeah, yeah. To leave the parable. Okay, what well, he said this, I hear what you're saying, but Jesus said this in John 6. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. And they went to stone him because they thought he was saying he was God. What do you make of that? Before Abraham existed, I existed before him. What do you think of that, sir? What is a circle on a floor? That's my name, that. Right? Yes, sir. <laughs> circle on a floor. I draw a circle. Imagine you're a circle. Yeah, yeah. And now, there is there a group of people. There is there a group of people. And whether he come from there or he come from here, he comes to the middle of the circle. He said, He that so touches one of these shall not be with me in the kingdom of heaven. At that minute, he stood in the light on his own. Okay, sir. And Caio passes at the edge and saying, He's a seditious rat. Okay. Because but, it's politics. But you know why they crucified him? It was more than that. They asked him, are you the son of the most blessed? And the word son of the most blessed could also be translated, are you the son of God? And in those days, the word son of God had the connotation that you were divine. Wait a minute, it's wait a minute. A man. It's God a man. Wait a minute, let me finish, it's let me finish. Let me finish. Jesus let me Christ. finish. You're a good guy, let me finish, let me yeah. finish. So they crucified him because he was claiming to be God, because he said he was the Son of God, you see. Okay? But he said, I am not the Son of Man. No, he, he, he actually said many times he's the Son of Man. In, in Mark he said, he's the Son of Man. The Son of Man goes back to Daniel, and God said, that, Daniel said, that the Ancient of Days is God. And he said, the Son of Man will come like the Ancient of Days. So the Son of Man has the divinity of the Ancient of Days, God. Why would Jesus want to leave himself out of Daniel when it is that he's been used and violated? He's ready for a death he can see, and he can sit down with life and see the as Daniel did in his case. Why? 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 Because Jesus is Daniel. We, yeah, but why? But why? You know why? Because before the beginning of time, Jesus decided to come down and be a man. There's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one, and the Son came to be a man. Uh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Yeah, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you're asking some good questions. But he says in, in uh, Isaiah 53, it was prophesied 800 years before Jesus. Could you tell me who this is? Is this Israel to you? Because the Jews say this is Israel. Are you ready? Listen to this. Is this Israel? But you tell me if this is Israel. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. 
the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of all. Does that sound like Israel or does that sound like Jesus? Sounds like San Edron. Sounds like Jesus, sir. Sounds like Jesus. He loved you. God bless you, sir. In Christ Jesus. Amen. God bless you. He loved you and died for you and gave his life for you. Jesus Christ was prophesied that he would die for you. It says he was bruised for our iniquities. I'll read it for you in the Bible. This is in the Holy Bible. This is a prophecy of Jesus. 800 years before Jesus, this is a prophecy. This is a prophecy of Jesus. This was 800 years before Jesus ever lived. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did not stream him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement. Of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All oh, we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he will cut off the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he was made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, and he shall sit, see his seed, and he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. That is a prophecy of Jesus. Before Jesus was even born, 800 years before Jesus was even born, it was prophesied that he would die on the cross. He was bruised, says the prophet Isaiah. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we are healed. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So there in Isaiah, there's a prophecy that Jesus would die for you and me. There in the word of God. It was prophesied that Jesus will give his life for you and for me. It was prophesied that he will shed his blood for you and for me. Now the question is, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Are you going to believe? Are you going to believe in the Messiah, in Jesus who died for you? Are you going to believe him? Are you going to believe him? Are you going to repent and put your faith, put your faith in him? Are you going to repent and put your faith in him and trust in him? The Bible teaches a heaven and a hell. The Bible teaches a heaven and a hell. The Bible clearly teaches a heaven and a hell. The Bible says to be weeping and gnashing of teeth in the last day, on the judgment day. The Bible teaches there is a heaven and a hell and people are going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. And what you do with Jesus Christ, whether you believe in him or not, hangs your eternal destiny. Your eternal destiny hangs on, do you believe in Jesus Christ as your saviour? Not just as a prophet, but as a saviour. As your Lord and saviour. Someone who shed his blood for you and gave his life for you. Your future destiny depends on what you do with Jesus Christ. Whether you believe in Him as your Lord and Saviour, or whether you reject Him. Whether you stay as you are, or whether you repent. Repentance means you turn away 
from the things that you know are not right. You turn away from the things you know are wrong in your life. And you trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior.